My project is about beauty standards, the media, and its effects on people. Although both men and women are impacted by the media, I will primarily focus more on women. I chose this topic because I feel like it is a current problem in today's society. Have you ever wanted to be someone else? When children play pretend, they often reimagine themselves as princesses or superheroes and so on. As we get older, sometimes we still wish we could be someone outside of ourselves even if it isn't a princess or a superhero. Sometimes we want to become that ideal person that we see plastered in magazines and featured on television. This is beauty standards and the media. There is an immense pressure placed on women to achieve and maintain standards of beauty which are set forth by the media. Due to this pressure, Many women may suffer from mental and physical health problems in attempts to attain this unrealistic standard of beauty. There are many different definitions for beauty. One of the definitions is a beautiful or pleasing person or thing. Since beauty is subjective, I asked some of my friends and family what they thought beauty was in one word. The purpose of showing this is to show that there is no one true definition of what beauty is and since there is no one true definition then we should not have to be held to one standard oh she don't see the light that's shining deeper than the eyes can find it maybe we have made a blind so she tries to cover up the pain and cut her woes away Girls don't cry after their face is made. But there's a beauty standards are the socially constructed ideals of how a person should appear. Some of the recent American beauty trends include dramatic eye makeup, big full lips, straight white teeth, thin bodies, larger butts, and tanning. Some of the ways people have tried to achieve this look is through makeup, dieting and exercise, photoshop, and plastic surgery. It is important to understand that the beauty standard is different in each country. The mass media is defined as any means of communication that can reach a large number of people. This is a powerful tool which is capable of framing the standards of our society. The beauty ideal can be seen in various forms of media such as film, television, advertisements, magazines, and social media. The technique of repetition is used to persuade the audience. The images that we see and learn are often internalized. Heavy users of media are more impacted because they start to believe that the content that they see and hear mirror the real world when they actually do not. People who are constantly exposed to this content may start to believe that these beauty standards, including unrealistic and unhealthy ones, should be aspired to. A study done by UW Madison students state that magazines are able to sell body dissatisfaction to their readers through unrealistic images of women. Most women of all ages are believed to hold unrealistic ideals of body shape and image this can be both physically and emotionally unhealthy. Although some people claim that they're beyond reach of the media's messages, we still are able to carry in our minds their messages about appearance and desirability. Probably. Yes. For women, um, rather for guys, there's not this need to be um, looking a certain way, having to put on makeup, having to put your hair a certain way. I think girls, especially younger girls, have a certain pressure from their peers to feel that way and to look that way. So I definitely feel that women feel that more than guys um, in terms of making themselves um, feel more beautiful because of the influence of social media and other forms uh, and, uh, that are uh, prevalent in today's community. Some of the negative effects or behaviors that can be generated through exposure to media are low self-esteem, unrealistic expectations, objectification and sexualization, eating disorders such as anorexia and bulimia, and body dysmorphia just to name a few. The media may promote low body weight 
body dissatisfaction, and unhealthy eating habits. This can be particularly harmful to a younger audience because they are more impressionable and internalize this. According to social learning theory, people, especially children, learn behaviors and attitudes from the people who show them. These people can be in their everyday lives or they can be in the media. Cultivation theory states that people who are heavy media consumers may start to believe that what they see in the media mirrors the real world. While the media itself cannot create harmful body attitudes, they are still able to promote images which may lead to damage in self-esteem and unhealthy attempts to attain this beauty ideal. We often buy into the lie that the media sells us, that our bodies need fixing. Although we are bombarded with media that promote mixed messages about our bodies and the standard of beauty, there is still light at the end of the tunnel. Cutting back on media consumption and understanding what and how the media promotes its messages are one solution. There have been more platforms which are able to highlight social problems such as this and call for change. Companies such as Dove and Now Foundation have started campaigns for self-esteem, self-love, and body positivity. These campaigns challenge the media's body distortion and stereotypes. More diversity is slowly spreading through media such as magazines, which means for more representation. With more representation, this may lead to a more realistic image for different women to look up to. Although the media may never go away, the messages that they promote may be changed by focusing on positive platforms about body image and beauty standards. In the end, the only diet which should be enforced is a media diet.